Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Beechcraft slash Textron 350i as well as how to start it, how to fly it, a little bit about the different navigation systems that we have on board of it, and basically just kind of take a complete flight, kind of see how you fly it, some of the general notes, anything along those lines. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, first things first, uh, when you're operating inside this aircraft, uh, this is a very, very ultra-modernized version of this particular plane. I mean, I love how they've updated so many of these different controls. You've got three gigantic display panels on it. The automatic pilot is still there. we got a little mini device here. Uh, one thing I'm really impressed with this aircraft, uh, when you climb in the back, look at how gorgeous this aircraft is. It's just, oh, this is just such luxury. It's also a really, really nice plane because it's got some pretty good short takeoff performance as well as it's not that difficult to operate. So we're going to be using a pretty straightforward uh, checklist here today. I'll go ahead and put a comment on it down in my uh, little YouTube comment zone as far as uh, where I'm, what I'm using here. So we're just going to go ahead and go through step by step. So our first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the throttle is in the idle position. Now you want to be kind of cautious with this because believe it or not, you can put the throttle in the reverse position too. You just want to make sure it's all the way down there in the idle position. We're going to make sure our propeller control, which is right here, is set all the way up to 100%. We're just going to slap that thing in that position. We're not going to be doing a lot with this compared to the older versions of this. The next thing you know, we want to go ahead and double check what our trim setting is. You can see our trim setting should be set to takeoff. Usually about neutral trim is about as much as you're going to need to do. You can just click it real quick and you can see it's already set to neutral slash takeoff. Next thing you know what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and flip on our batteries. Now this aircraft has a pretty complicated little system of batteries. Uh, we actually have an emergency battery, which uh, not today, but we do have these switches here. One, two, three. Now when we first start this thing, we only need to do the batteries. We don't need to do any of the avionics. Otherwise, we are going to absolutely kill our battery way before we get a chance to actually do anything with it. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look. You can see everything's set. Everything's good and everything looks good so far. Again, we're just going to kind of move our way right through it without too, too much challenge here today. All right, next thing you know what we want to do is we want to go double check to make sure our set of stuff is set up as far as lights goes. Now, sometimes what you're going to do is you're going to have to turn on some panel lights. If you actually look directly above your head, all of your panel lights are located right here. You've got your indirect instrument lights. You've got your flood lights. Absolutely anything you could possibly need. Don't forget your little off fashion. If it's an emergency, of course, you can slap that switch and it turns all of the panel lights on simultaneously. If you don't, you can just go ahead and click it off and not worry about it too, too much. Next thing you know, I'm going to go ahead and give my controls a good old fashioned wiggle and make sure everybody's working okay. Get my feet. Okay, the brakes seem to be working. Let's have my parking brake. All right. Looks good. It's going to honk at you, but don't worry about it too, too much. Go ahead and acknowledge that warning. Uh, flight controls are looking good. Avionics master switch. Uh, usually what you want to do is the reason you're going to be doing this step is to double check what your ATIS is for that particular day. So I'm going to go ahead and snap on the avionics button. And normally what you would do is you go ahead and pop up your handy dandy little guy in here. Go to ATIS and take a listen. Ah, altimeter 2992. That's the important part that we're going to need to keep an eye on. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. Next thing you know, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make sure everything else is all preset and ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and check this. This looks pretty good. And if you accidentally do one of these things and drag it, you can always tap that button. This is a G3000, by the way, in case you're curious. Transponder, you're going to make sure it's set to the standby position, what it is set to. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our next step. Weather looks good. Anti-ice, we don't need. If we did need some anti-ice, if you actually kind of swing on down this side, look at how many ice protection controls we actually have at our disposal here. This is awesome. We have some prop anti ice windshield we got pedo we got everything under the sun i'm not going to turn any of those on just yet and of course we're going to go ahead and get ready to start now so starting this thing is a not that difficult of a process it kind of spooks some people the first time that you're kind of out kind of playing around with it we're just going to confirm something real quick all right looks good basically what you have to do because we are a turboprop aircraft is we're going to have to get the thing spinning fast and then we introduce the fuel so first things first we're going to go ahead and flick on our critical lighting system here that's going to be our recog light snap that one on i'm also going to snap on the b can light which is over on this side that's going to get this little chap up on the top sort of flashing letting everybody know around us hey we're about to get this thing started stay away next thing you know what we're going to do is i'm going to make sure these mixtures are actually all the way at idle i want to make sure these are off so what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here and you have your automatic ignition switches you're going to arm both of these switches and then what we're going to do is we have the engine start switch right here so what you're going to want to do is if you just want to spin the prop, let's say you accidentally flooded it, you click it down. If you want to go ahead and actually do the starting, you click it up. So I'm just going to click it like that, and we're just going to wait patiently for a moment as the engine starts to spool up. You can see that the smaller part of the gas turbine is uh, spinning around. Once this gets to about 15%, we're going to gently start to bring in the fuel. Again, you don't have to go nuts. 
going to start tapping just a teeny tiny bit. You quit or 15%. Keep pushing. What's going to happen is your interstage turbine temperature is going to suddenly go whoosh and go flying up. Keep your hand on this control. What you don't want to do is accidentally let your fuel basically go rushing into that thing before it gets turning quickly. Give it just a little bit more. It's starting to rev up a little bit. You can see prop is starting to spin up. Interstage turbine temperature looks delightful. All right, I'm going to leave this at the low idle setting now. That engine is nice and started. It's going to be turning relatively slowly right now because we're at the low idle. Low idle, by the way, is going to make things a little bit easier for us later on. Engine successfully started. I'm going to go ahead and disengage the starter. Go ahead and flick on the one on the left and do the same exact process here. Let it get going again. It's going to yell at us all sorts of craziness. They're up to 10%, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all right. Go ahead and tap this up about the same percentage that the other one was at. And you can see it's starting to accelerate. We've got a good light off. You can see that we've got some heat coming out. You can see we're generating a little tiny bit of torque, but you can notice that the propeller is moving very, very slowly. The reason it's moving so slowly is because we have the conditions set to what they call ground idle. Or I should say this is a low idle in this particular system. Now, the reason it's doing that is it's basically just turning everybody over, not going too aggressively. Let's go ahead and snap off the starter. We don't need it anymore. And now we're good to go. Now, if we wanted to rev up our engines now, all we'd have to do is go ahead and not touch the throttle, but touch the condition lever. If I slap that forward, both of these engines will accelerate very quickly and make all sorts of noise. And they're also going to give us an awful lot of ground thrust, which, of course, so we might not need if we're trying to be very, very gentle with our acceleration. If I wanted to go ahead and give the regular throttle a touch, you can see everything revs up nice and smoothly. Okay, that is all set. We're good to go. I'm going to take a look at my warnings. It's telling me about the parking brake. It's talking about the pedo heat. We'll go ahead and clean that up now. Uh, let's uh, swing down. We got our different lights on. Double check, double check, double check. Flip on both sides where the pedo heats. The warning lights go off. All right, let's go ahead and set up our MCP now. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to be traveling at 7,500 feet today. So I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing to 7,500. That is going to be our cruise altitude. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, usually we set our heading to our takeoff heading. Speed, this is going to be our climb speed. Uh, with this aircraft, you can generally climb at about 160 knots. Seems to be kind of the lower end end of fast kind of a thing, if that makes any sense. But I do like using that particular speed for this purposes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure our CDI, which you can see right now, is set to VOR mode. We're actually going to come over here and change it to FMS so that we can use the GPS in order to do our navigation. If you want to get rid of that, you can just click on the circle again. I have a separate video that explains how all that stuff works. That's looking pretty good. 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 Just kind of going through everything. It looks pretty good. I'm going to do that mistake about a thousand times before things actually go well for me. Uh, go ahead and uh, check my last couple of things. Engine looks good. Temperatures look good. I can actually bring the idle control back to low if I don't want this thing to go revving around on me. You can see I've got a nice little red handle here giving me a heads up. And now we're all set and kind of ready to do our taxiing. Normally what you want to do, of course, is you want to go ahead and call everybody up and I'll let them know that you're about to be taxiing the aircraft. So we might as well do that today. I'm going to request taxi. We're doing a basically an easy departure today. Bravo request taxi to the active east departure. Red 64 taxi to an hold short of runway 28 by a taxiway. Contact tower on 118 decimal 7 when ready. All right, they said 2-8, which means we're going that way today. So we're kind of going to have to zigzag halfway through. We're going to have to go around this guy. Oh, boy. That's going to be a bit of a process. Actually, what we could do is we could back taxi, too. But again, we have to do whatever they give us the permission to do so. All right, you got it, boys. Short runway, 2-8, using taxiway, red, 6 four. All right. So now that everything's all set with that, we can go ahead and call for a pushback if we want to go ahead and turn around. But um, unfortunately, that is just not my tradition. All right, when we're taxiing, it's generally a good idea to go ahead and snap on your taxi light to let everybody around you know that you are taxiing. Again, since it's not nighttime, we don't have to worry about it this much. Generally, you don't want to take an aircraft of this kind of weight over this kind of terrain. Now, when you do things like that, it tends to, uh, you know, cause issues. All right, go ahead and line ourselves up here. Looking good. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of stutter here, but I'm sure that's related to uh, some of the terrain here. Okay, so what we have to do now is we have to get around this guy. So we're basically going to have to thread this needle to kind of get through this. Then we're going to have to come all the way around and kind of zing on that side. All right, while that's going on, we'll go ahead and get ready for our takeoff and all that other good stuff. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll give myself exactly one notch of flaps. That's all you're going to need for takeoff on this aircraft. Yeah, we want to be very cautious with that big bus. I'm sure they don't appreciate us ripping around them like this. Boy, all right, give it a little squeeze. All right, looking good. All right, let's get going. Okay, 
So the aircraft is uh, really, really simple to get in the air. What we're going to do is we're going to use mostly full throttle. We're basically going to max out our torque limitation. Once we hit that point, we're basically going to accelerate down the runway until we get to 105 knots. That's basically going to be our decision speed, or V1. Uh, we're going to lift up the front wheel at about 110 knots, and usually the thing comes off the ground pretty nicely at about 115. Now, what makes this aircraft kind of unique is going to be that when we climb, we can climb tremendously steep with the aircraft itself. You know, we don't have to sit there and do like our typical seven and a half degrees. You know, after that initial takeoff, we can crank ourselves up all the way through uh, like 15 degrees if we needed to. But keep in mind, we are still a turboprop. Now, one thing you're probably noticing is I'm ripping along here very, 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 very quickly. Like uh, normally when you're going to be taxing, again, I'm barely even touching the throttle and this thing's just picking up speed like effortlessly. The reason for that is because we are currently in high idle mode. If I actually take a look down here to the right, you can see that we're set to high idle versus low idle. What I can actually do is I can actually pull the condition levers down to low idle position. Now, if I do that, the RPM in the engines is going to slow down, so it's not going to be producing as much thrust and it's going to make it much much easier to taxi because now the thing is not going to be cranking around on us at full blast okay we can give it a squeeze so we can take a nice tight turn here all right you can see my taxiway diagram now what's really wild about the high and low idle method is the fact that you can actually push your throttle forward at any time and there'll be no consequence to doing so the aircraft will still continue to kind of get ripping along without too much effort on your part you could even take off at low idle and it would still not really do any damage to anything. Because again, that's all handled separately anyway. Man, what a, what a taxi operation this is. What a taxi operation indeed. All right, it looks like uh, we're gonna have to back taxi the remainder of the method because uh, we can't get by this little red guy here. Go ahead and hold the brakes. Excuse me, sir. I don't wanna come smacking into you. I believe that's the fuel box. And we're just going to go ahead and sneak out of the runway using this illegal taxiway. I really did not want to back taxi. I always find that very rude. All right, as usual, we got to ask permission before we go get going. We're going to go ahead and request takeoff. Juliana Tower, red, six, four, runway. Normally, we would have gone right there and back taxi, but ah, this is too much fun. Red, six, four, cleared for takeoff runway. All right, they gave us permission. Well, let's get going. So we're going to slap off the taxi light. Landing light's got to come on. You're going to go ahead and flip on your navigation light. If it's nighttime, I always like to flick on my strobe light too, which is kind of a convenience thing. I'm going to go ahead and line ourselves up like this. Looking pretty good. Yeah, i got plenty of runway. Switch to high idle. Just want to confirm that everything came up okay. A high idle is set. Everything's good. Everything's set. Set, set, set. Chickity check. Let's go ahead and check that. Looks good, looks good. Audio set. I'm going to flip on our flight director, and now we are ready for takeoff. Takeoff on this thing is really, really simple. We're just going to go ahead and push the throttle forward until we are at maximum torque, and that our ITT, which is our interstage turbine temperature, does not exceed maximum. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. We'll go ahead and acknowledge. Looks like we're going to be about 94% today. And off we go. That's it. <laughs> now we just kind of hang out. So uh, how y'all doing today? Oh, by the way, we're at full RPM, in case you're curious. Now this aircraft is not exactly what I consider a sprightly performer, <laughs> especially in you know the nice hot Caribbean sun here. It's gonna be going a little bit slower than you usually expect. It almost feels like we're moving in slow motion, but we're accelerating at a decent clip here. All right, we're looking for, like I said, about 105 knots is gonna be decision. 110 is gonna be rotate. <laughs> Take that, people on the beach. <laughs> Landing gear up as always. Now, our initial climb out, like I said, we can do it once we get over about 125 knots. You can go ahead and slap up the first degree of laps. And we're going to go ahead and start climbing again. 150 knots is uh, going to get you a pretty good balance between pitch as well as speed. But again, this thing just climbs like crazy. You can see about 15 degrees right there, and I'm still climbing. It's just tremendous. A lot of people will actually reduce the power there because it's just a little bit too much. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out my display here so I can see my initial turn. We're going to go ahead and acknowledge their thing that they just asked me to. You got it. And now we are on our way. So you can see that I'm at like 10 degrees here and I'm doing 160. This has just got a tremendous amount of power. Now during climb, what you're gonna be monitoring is both your torque as well as your ITT. You wanna make sure neither one of these goes bouncing into the red zone. Oop, that's a little bit too much pitch there. I should be paying attention to what I'm doing. 
That's looking pretty good right about there. As you climb, the air is going to get significantly thinner, so you're always going to have to be playing around with your throttle the entire climb out. You know, we don't have one of those fancy systems that you see like on the PC-12 that does all this work for us. That's looking pretty good right about there. Again, I'll flip on the automatic pilot when I'm a little more confident of where we are. This aircraft actually requires a little bit of uh, aileron trim, which doesn't surprise me given the tremendous weight torque this thing has. It's about 15, like I said, this is, uh, oh, 12 and a half, I should say. We're, we're climbing pretty steep right now. Give it just a little bit of right trim. You can see my torque is about 98% right now, but I'm still within my temperature limits. If I let go of the controls, I want to see what the aircraft wants to do. It wants to pull a little bit to the left, so a little more aileron trim. Good idea to go ahead and have a button bound to that. It makes your life much, much simpler, especially when you deal with, like, if we see any warbirds or anything like that. I'm still doing about 160, but look at how steep the nose is on this thing right now. And we are at 100% torque. That's it. Uh, after this point, of course, uh, we'd be over-torquing the engine, which could do a tremendous amount of damage to something that costs like $750,000 US each. So, <laughs> kind of keep that in the back of your head when you're doing stuff like this. Alright, I think I've just about got it trimmed out in the aileron there. Continue climbing here. We're going up to about 7,500 feet today. All right, you'll notice that my th uh, torque has actually hit 101%. I'm actually going to have to back the throttle up a little teeny tiny bit. Not unusual. It's kind of a consequence of the way that they design things in this version of Flight Simulator. Our turboprops actually work in reverse. Normally, as you get higher, the torque goes down. But again, we'll deal with it. All right, good idea to go ahead and throw on your yaw damper once you get up a little bit of altitude. You don't want to be using your yaw damper for takeoff or landing, because if you lose an engine, it's going to end up being a battle in order to get control of the aircraft, and that's never a safe thing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flick on the automatic pilot. And we're going up. This is not a very long journey today, so I'm not too, too worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure everything looks okay. I'm going to flip on my navigation mode. The aircraft should be taking a gentle right turn now. And we are just about up to our cruise altitude of 7,500 feet. I'm going to go ahead and double check my uh, cruise checklist to make sure everything's okay. Uh, generally, during climbing out, uh, they'll tell you to be using a little less torque than I'm using, but in this case, I'm using what they call a maximum performance climb. A typical cruise climb with this particular aircraft is about 80% torque. So if you're looking for that, I guess, uh, what do you want to call it, slightly kind of smaller thing? I don't know why I decided to uh, bypass that, but I'm fine with it. I can deal with it. And there we go. Okay. So basically, uh, one of the things is, uh, now that we're at our cruise altitude, we can go ahead and get prepared for our cruise settings. Now, the cruise settings on this thing, usually 85% torque is considered kind of the upper limit of it. So I'm going to go ahead and gently pull back on the throttle until we get to about 85%. You can see it takes a very long time for this turboprop to respond to. And 86, and about 85 is going to be right there. Perfect. Okay. So we're well within our rules here. We're well within our comfort level here. Our prop is cruising along at exactly the RPM we wanted it. Uh, some people say, well, what do you need the prop handle for on this aircraft? I mean, well, what you could do is you could technically reduce the prop a little bit. And again, that's going to be your RPM if you're looking for a quieter flight. So uh, generally, if you're looking for a magic number for those folks who uh, take these things, like I said, if you want to be very serious, you can always knock it down to about 1600. That's considered about normal as far as RPM goes. And again, you're not really doing much to the aircraft by reducing the RPM except making a little bit quieter you know this isn't like the old airplanes that have like a sweet spot for torque again you're going to be milking that uh, prop handle very very gently in order to get it pretty close to 1600 push it a little bit the other way there we go i'm just going to kind of let it settle a little bit so we're at 85 torque 1600 rpm we are now in cruise mode everything's looking solid all right we're going to go ahead and start preparing for our descent this is like i said not a terribly long flight it's only about 127 nautical miles uh, since we're at 7500 feet uh, 120 nautical miles let's do the math real quickly uh, we need to lose 7500 feet that's 500 feet per minute to get us down to the ground 500 into 7 uh, 75 is about 15 minutes before we get to our destination so we have plenty of time before we're going to have to descend See then. All right, we're about 15 minutes from our top of a, we're actually at our top of descent, I should say. We're about 15 minutes from our waypoint. Let's go ahead and set everything up. So we're going to be going down to a thousand feet. I've got everything uh, pre-selected here. Another thing that I've done is I've gone ahead and I've actually, actually come over here to the split button and click on FPL mode. I've actually selected an approach to RNAV 30. Uh, there's a good video I have up on my YouTube that'll show you how to do all these steps as well. So with that all the way and everything looking pretty good, I'm actually, we're pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and set that back up to full mode. Uh, I don't need to do this. Let's go ahead and snap it back out of this mode. Whoop. 
load and activate. There we go. Everything's all preloaded. Go back to map mode. Turn the map on. Shut that off. And we are looking good. All right. So we're going to be cruising down to about 1,000 feet. This is going to be an RNAV approach today. So to get us ready, I'm going to go ahead and select the descent speed. I actually like my current descent speed. So you can actually mash this thing normally. I'm going to go ahead and crank it all the way up to my current speed of about 240. Oop, that's a bit too fast. 240 knots. This will be pretty safe for us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over to vertical speed mode. Press vertical speed once. Click this until I get 500 feet per minute and then i'm gonna have to play the throttle game for a minute to try to find just the right rpm that's going to get me that nice even 500 feet per minute of course by the time i've said this a minute and a half has already gone by so as a result since i've lost all that extra time i'm actually going to, have to increase my descent rate just a teeny tiny bit which means i'm going to bring back my throttle a little bit as well so now that we're at this about position during our journey we want to start be thinking about all the other things we need to worry about we're going to double check our fuel system to make sure everything is working here uh, one of the weird things about the fuel system on this particular aircraft is because of the way it's set up you basically have a primary tank and a backup tank if i actually switch it like this you can see we're on the um, backup tank if we click here we go back to the main tank here so one of those things is even though you could show 200 pounds here if I flip back over here, you can see I've actually got 410 pounds in that tank. Now, what that actually means is if you go to the fuel page, you can see we're actually burning out of the auxiliary tanks first and then taking sips out of the main tank. The way the system actually works is it sucks fuel out of these tanks and puts it into the main tanks. It's just kind of a neat little quirk. As a matter of fact, if I sit here and just kind of let it go for a second, you can see how it's draining these to fill these. It's kind of a neat little setup how that actually works in this particular situation. So um, we're going to go ahead and continue our descent here and basically since again this is a g3000 this is so nice i'm just going to click and drag and you can see my uh, next approach is going to put us right here this is going to be dual bow we're going to zip around the outside and we're basically going to come straight in for a landing right in the middle of the island uh, not going to be too too difficult i'll go ahead and uh, kind of meet you guys right when we get over there to dual bow Okay, uh, we're just about heading up to Dulvo now. Now we need to get this aircraft ready to land. Uh, the first problem we have is that we're going very, very, very fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase my prop, go ahead and back my throttle all the way back. So now this particular aircraft has a relatively simple procedure when we're landing. Uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming in at about 150 knots for kind of the initial part of the approach. Uh, once we get our flaps set down for our initial thing, we're going to drop down to 130 knots. After we cross that particular point, our final approach speed is going to bring us down to about 100. 105 knots, which is going to be too, too much. Uh, hopefully when we touch the ground, we're going to be doing about 100. Now, this is going to bring up our next problem we're going to have as far as how this aircraft differs from uh, ones in previous generations. And that's going to be the fact that when we do reduce the throttle like this, we're not going to get the benefit of that extreme braking force that you typically get when uh, you reduce your throttle like that in an aircraft with a controllable pitch prop. But um, we'll still be able to slow ourselves down fairly effectively here. That little angry sound, by the way, is just reminding us that we need landing gear. All right, we need to be doing about 150 knots here. We don't need a landing gear just yet. When we hit Lumpa, we'll put them down. Beautiful little view of the islands here, by the way. You can take a look at our nice little handy-dandy windmills. We'll go ahead and slap on the landing lights. I hope we did that just a moment ago, so we're pretty much good to go. It's just a little tiny bit of thrust. Again, about 150 knots is kind of a sweet spot if you're trying to wait for that last bit. We're actually tremendously heavy right now because of the fact that this wasn't a very long flight for us, and we didn't burn nearly that much fuel. You can actually see here we're basically hanging on our tail here, and we're doing almost 5 degrees nose up right now in order to keep this thing airborne because of how much weight we're actually carrying. A pretty good side of the island here. We're going to go ahead and take our right hand. We're actually considerably below glide slope, but uh, by the time we get to Lumpa, we'll be pretty much right where we need to be. So we'll go ahead and accelerate time a little teeny bit here and get us ourselves over to Lumpa in a hurry. And it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And again, we're going relatively slow, but remember, we're tremendously heavy here. All right, swing around. It's a good time to go ahead and drop our first notch of flaps as well as our landing gear. So we're going to confirm that that went down. We're going to confirm that our flap handle went to the correct position. The moment you do that, you can go ahead and back your throttle out a little bit. You're looking for 130 knots. Again, you don't want to bring that next notch of flaps down until you get down to about that speed. Look out the window real quick here. Go ahead and reset all my view here. Make sure it's nice and easy. Stick my head up a little bit. Go ahead and push the throttle forward. We're going to get right, 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 right about 130 knots. Seems to be about the sweet spot. Get a lovely view of the island like this way. All right, at any point now, of course, we want to disable our yaw damper and we want to arm the approach. 
Now, the reason we're disabling the auto damper is, like I said, if we have an engine failure at any point, we need to be able to activate that system so that we don't have to fight it. So one thing I always like to do, too, is you want to double check to make sure your ignition's on auto. And another thing you want to watch out for would be your automatic feather. In this particular case, I'm going to set this to the arm position, but you can see it is disabled in this version of Flight Simulator. So we don't have that capability, which is actually kind of sad because that's one of the most critical features you're going to need if something bad happens here. Okay, so now we're basically going to proceed very, very cautiously into our islands here. You can see our radar altimeter. Everything's looking really, really good as far as that goes. Oh, I'm slow down just a little bit. I'm getting a little, a little bit too much here. Basically, we're doing an RNAV approach, which is a random navigation, a.k.a. it's a GPS approach. Get a little bit closer. Now, this is a very neat approach for those of you who have never seen this before. I'm actually going to get myself just a teeny tiny bit of altitude because I just feel a little low. Should have checked the approach plate before doing this attempt, of course. But, uh, you know, I don't always do that, which is a really naughty thing to do. I'll go get myself a little bit of thrust here. A little bit higher. Again, I just want a little bit better visibility. I'm not going to hit anything on the island or anything like that. You can see that pretty clearly here. But you don't want to be in a position where basically you're going to fall off the sky either. All right, get myself just a teeny tiny bit more. I think it was supposed to be 3,000 feet, but ah, I should have read the approach plate first. Again, that's one of the things you should be doing before flying these missions. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> there we go. Ah, oh, we got the altitude I needed. Looking out the window. Oh, what a lovely day. This is just gorgeous. I really expect to see more boats down here, but eh, oh well. All right, it's just a little bit higher. 2,000 feet should be pretty good here. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. All right, bring us back down to 130 knots. See the runway? We probably could have waited on flaps, too, as well as my landing gear. Generally, you want to put them down at the same time. All right, we are now established on the glide slope. I'm taking a look right here. And you can see very clearly we're just about to smack into it. Glide path selected. Go ahead and put down our last notch of flaps. Make sure everything is looking good as far as the aircraft goes. We want to be coming down to about 105 knots. It's kind of the sweet spot as far as our approach speed goes. So again, I got my throttle back all the way. We want to go ahead and start thinking about missed approach as usual. I'm going to go ahead and set my missed approach altitude to 3,500 feet. And it's going to be basically a turn to the right. That looks good. And it's going to be about right there. 105 knots have just about hit. Cancel. There we go. And now we are established on the approach. Again, this is a random navigation approach, so we're going to be responsible for the last 200 feet, so to speak. All right. Checking my speed looks good. I've got my altitude looks good. Now it looks good. I'll go ahead and shut that off. You'll do that a thousand times also. Landing lights are engaged. Normally, you'd want your auto feather to be armed because otherwise we get have really bad news. Yaw damper is in the off position. Speed is perfect. Oh, we, we got this. This is actually going pretty well. Now, this aircraft is equipped with a thrust reverser. In the event that you do want to use it, you need to make sure that your mixture control and your propeller control is all the way forward. Otherwise, you will not be able to engage that particular setting. And you can see we have ourselves a pretty nice little crosswind, as always. And it's going to be making things a little interesting for us as we come down. Now, what I find really interesting here is I'm looking at the uh, vertical path indicator here, and I see quite a few whites there, even though we're basically perfectly in glide slope. So that tells me that they're not coincident, which is actually, I'm not going to call it universal, but uh, you'll see quite a bit of it in all your years and years and years of flying. I'm going to my head down just a little bit so I can keep an eye on my speed. This is pretty easy. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to get over the end of the runway. You're going to gently pull the throttle all the way back to zero. When you see about 100 knots, just gently touch the ground. Make sure you put the front wheel on the ground first before jamming on the thrust reverse. If you do that early, uh, you're going to have some bad news. Also, uh, this is going to sound kind of silly, but don't forget to shut the automatic pilot off. Some people forget to do that, and you end up with a little bit of a battle on the way down the runway. All right, looking pretty good. Speed's still absolutely perfect. I could actually add one little teeny notch of it, and we're in perfect shape now. Everything else looks good. I've got Mr. Approach ready. Not that I need it. Again, I can do a visual from here on out. Glide slope is perfect. Check to make sure the landing gear down one last time. Flaps are all the way down one last time. And we are in great shape. Automatic pilot is disengaged. Yeah, we're going to fly the last part by hand. 
When you do power changes, remember it takes time because it's a turboprop. Getting a little slow, but it seems like the uh, RNAV wanted to land us at the end of the threshold, not at the end of the runway. Over the end of the runway, we're doing about 100. Go ahead and gently pull the throttle back. And we're just going to pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. It really does not take much. Okay, we overshot that a little bit, but that's all right. There we are. Reversers on. Reversers off. And we are here. Nice. All right, hopefully this video was helpful as far as this aircraft goes. This thing is absolutely great for relatively short hops like this. You know, again, it needs a little bit of runway to get going, so I don't recommend doing anything too, too crazy with it. But then again, it works fairly well. You know, the avionics on this thing are just, they're amazing what you could do with them. And again, I had a separate video that explains a lot of that stuff. Other than that, enjoy.